Okay, all right, I think it's safe to say we can get started. So I am going to go ahead and begin for everybody that's joined us so far. Thank you for joining and listening to our cat talk. Um, <laughs> today we're gonna speak about a customer that we've had for quite a while, um, Daycare Owl, and we're joined with Akriti here. Um, and so hi. basically, hi. Um, we're gonna just, you know, go over a lot of what the process with Sheep looks like between Daycare Owl and setting it up and getting it launched and, and all those great things and really hear uh, about the business and everything. So um, if you are new uh, to this, my name is Tamara and I am the Growth and People Manager. Uh, with Shoop. And so today, again, we are joined by Akriti, uh, Day Carol CEO and co-founder. If you wanted to just uh, introduce yourself a little bit, that'd be really great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me here today, Tamara. Uh, my name is Akriti Srivastav, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Day Carol, as Tamara mentioned. Um, but before all of that, I am a small family licensed child care provider uh, from Pleasanton, California. Awesome. Yes, we were we were talking a little bit about this about I'm from New York and that's where I am and she's in California and I see she has her coat on and it, it makes me feel like we're on the same type of coastline. So. It's it's chilly here today. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's still nice enough to sit outside and I definitely am going to be taking that tip from you when the weather gets nicer here to, to work outside. It looks calming and nice. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to go ahead and start off with a little bit about Day Carol and just kind of um, what it is and, and just a little bit of that background, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Day Carol is a marketplace that helps parents search and book licensed child care at uh, licensed child care facilities across the United States. Um, I created the platform to essentially bridge the growing gap between parents and licensed child care providers. Uh, if you're a parent on the call, then you know that child care rates are kind of skyrocketing, especially with facilities kind of shutting down left and right. Uh, the platform essentially helps daycare segment meant their weekly rate. So daycare owl is uh, childcare without contracts and deposits where parents can find weekly, daily, and hourly childcare uh, across the country. Awesome. Yeah. I, um, you know, again, we spoke a little bit prior to this and I just, this is one of my favorite um, websites or partnerships that we've had. And I think it's a really great idea. So I just to put that in there. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Um, and then I kind of, we wanted to talk a little bit about the history of Day Carol. So it's like initial, uh, you know, it was a thought to begin with and a concept and kind of where that came from and the inspiration behind it. Absolutely. So um, as I mentioned, I am actually a small family licensed child care provider. I'm no longer uh, have my own facility, uh, but uh, essentially um, four or five years ago, I started my own daycare. Uh, I had a career in technology and I just wanted to work for myself. And I thought I would uh, kind of enrich young minds. And um, I had a technology background when I went into doing this. And so when I started my own home-based daycare, I obviously, I started talking to people. And what I found was that majority of parents had a really hard time finding licensed childcare. And this is because most licensed childcare providers rely on the state to market their daycare care and fill their daycare. But the fact is licensed daycares are businesses. They can market themselves anywhere. So um, I did really well in my first year because, you know, I got on, on the big platforms, the Yelps, the Facebooks and all those things. Um, but when I started talking to parents, you know, they, they found that the inventory was very limited because not every daycare is on Yelp. In fact, in my area at that time, there were only 12 facilities on Yelp, but there were around 60 licensed daycares in the area. So, you know, if you, this, is, this is an economic problem we were facing with childcare, which is, which is kind of been created by technology. Essentially, parents are chasing after the same daycares that they see online, these same 12 daycares. They're raising their rates year upon year where other facilities are kind of sitting empty and confused as to why they're not getting any business. And well, I ran a bunch of surveys and what I realized was that you know, most daycares did not know how to market themselves. They didn't know how to outreach parents. They were waiting on the state. And the only parents who were using the state resource were parents who needed help paying for child care. So they were only getting calls from parents who were using subsidized care and they were not getting any new clientele. And they were not jumping on these new platforms because these platforms that were out there were better suited for babysitters and nannies. 
majority of the big players had not understood the licensed childcare industry. You actually have to work in something to understand it. And um, just from that firsthand experience, the idea was born about four years ago. Wow, that's really interesting. I actually had no idea that it was um, something that the state really you know, was a part of and, and helped with. So that's really interesting and definitely a need in the, in the industry, you're 100%. Absolutely. And I should mention that uh, before we move on that um, licensed child care is different than the babysitting and nanny market and it varies across every single state. Uh, essentially licensed child care providers are fingerprinted and background checked. We're audited. We have to take EMSA and CPR classes. Uh, we have annual certifications and processes that we go to. We have su surprise inspections. Uh, we are also facilities that meet the child care tax credit law and we are the facilities that get you reimbursed for FSA. So licensed child care is really the child care that parents want to be using. Uh, if you are in a child care facility that does not have a license and has more than two kids, it is not a legal licensed facility. So something to look out for so parents should know. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Definitely um, information to know across the board. And I, I don't have kids myself yet, but one day, you know, that's definitely very important. <laughs> Um, I definitely, you know, this is a, this is obviously a great idea and it full formed into what it is today, but I'd love to talk about um, the transition to e-commerce and what that looks like for um, Daycare Owl. So I will go ahead if this would do this. Um, if you maybe wanted to touch a, bit, uh, touch a little bit about um, the research process and the steps that you kind of took, and then we can kind of just go chronologically from there. Absolutely. Um, so the first thing that's kind of important to know is that the, the product that you see in front of you right now is actually my third iteration at uh, Daycare Owl. Um, so the first time when I went out to do this, uh, create this platform, I uh, had a CTO who had a full-time job. He thought he could do it. But what we are trying to do has never been built before. So we were able to register a bunch of daycares just on a single concept and what was basically like a Google scheduling. But I want you to think of daycare as like Google scheduling on steroids. Uh, we have licensed childcare facilities that are booking weekly, daily, hourly kids, maybe six to 200 in one facility. And the platform has to be scaled to that. So no one out there is doing what Daycare Out was doing. So my first CTO was unable to complete the process. He kind of moved on. And uh, we, I went out and hired an offshore company. And uh, they really thought that they could do this. And a year and a half went by. Nothing was being done. They kept failing. They just could not get it right. And um, at this time, I had a, a, a new uh, advisor who uh, Garish Patange who came from comes from Facebook and the Chan Zuckerberg initiative and he was really able to give the company a lot of direction and he said hey look you know let's we were we were thinking we had to create a brand new platform at this juncture right no but the the code had been so sullied and just too many hands touching it and we're like it's not even worth salvaging and we're like we got to start over fresh and he was like why are we reinventing the wheel let's find somebody who already does this, right? And that's, you know, it was like a Google search and I was looking for a marketplace provider. I didn't really know what I was looking for, to be honest. I was looking for somebody to help me build this. And I came across Shoop and I started uh, doing some research and um, we had the first call. And what we realized is that a lot of the things that we were trying to build, you guys already had, Shoop already had this boilerplate. Why were we trying to reinvent the wheel? You guys already knew what marketplaces were. You already knew the, trans, the, the, you know, the intricacies, how the two sides needed to talk to each other. And that was like the great part is that we had to explain daycare all to you and our concept, but we didn't have to explain how the parties needed to talk and communicate and like how they needed to work together. So um, that was the first decision to go with Shoop. And then um, the other part was just the initial conversations that we had were fantastic. Uh, Right off the bat, Shoop realized that we were not like other uh, marketplaces. We were different. And there were a lot of intricacies to our product. We were immediately not, we weren't talking to like sales agents or, you know, we were talking to developers. We were talking to project managers. I think we probably went back and forth for about like two months before we committed. And uh, we had, uh, we, we, we got a quote and uh, we went along with it, but we're like, oh, I think, you know, maybe they bit off a little bit more than they could chew. And 
we were worried, oh gosh, these guys are not going to complete it. And we did go over the timeline, not by one month, not by two months, no, two and a half months, but Shoop did not charge us more and they still delivered. And integrity means a lot. You know, it, it says that they, they worked really hard and went above and beyond to get this completed. And for the first time this year, I started this company four years ago, for the first time in July of this year, Daycare Owl actually ran legitimate transactions as an e-commerce marketplace. And we have Shoop to thank for that. Well, thank you for speaking so highly. Um, I, a lot of the developers here, we work closely with them as well. And they always have really great things to say about you and, and the company and the communication with Daycare Owl. So we, we agree 100%. And congratulations on finally thank you. having some transactions uh, as of July. That's amazing. Um, and I, I definitely, you know, we spoke about it a little on this side, but uh, I would love if you talk a little bit more about uh, Day Carol and Shoop and the relationship we had. Um, maybe a little bit more detail about what it was, um, you know, when you were finding and sourcing vendors and maybe um, as far as, you know, working with the pre-launch implementation of it, um, that type of thing, if you wanted to speak a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, communication is critical on a product like this, especially when we're all not sitting in the same office together. And um, one of the things that we loved working with Shoop was that right off the bat, you know, we were using a couple of different tools. Obviously, we're two different organizations talking to each other, and it wasn't working. Um, you know, initially, just things were kind of being missed, and Shoop kind of, we all came back, and Shoop said, well, let's figure out a better way to do this, right? And then we all kind of moved to tools that everyone agreed with, and now we're on the same page. Um, the other thing that's great about Shoop, and I did not have this with previous, you know, companies and people that I worked with, is that we really feel listened to if there, this is a new site, we have new users, uh, we're, we're still in that kind of where we're writing transactions, but we're still in that testing and building phase. And so when things do happen or something does go down, I put up a message on Slack and before you know it, somebody's addressing the problem. You know, by the next morning, there have been days where I've worked with other vendors and two or three days have gone by. Nobody He's responded which is unreal you know it's it, these are like it leaves a bad taste in your vendors and with your uh, customers right and so uh, Shoop is incredibly responsive in handling problems we have a dedicated team to us which we love we're not we're we're not talking to five or six different people there's not a lot of turnover it's always the same people that we're talking to and we know that they intimately know our product and they they understand what we are trying to do you know they're not just building it for the sake of building it awesome yeah I 100% I agree I mean um, I've shared with you but as you know our previous viewers that I just joined in November and already I feel like I've I've learned so much about what we do but also our um, clients and and their projects and you know those are their babies so it's really important to understand and to be a part of that process so I definitely agree 100% um, mm -hmm. I know uh, we spoke a little again about your launch and how that kind of happened amidst uh, the COVID pandemic and I was, would love if you talk about that and shed some light on how um, that was for your business. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I did own a time at the, uh, excuse me, at the time COVID happened, I did own my daycare still. And as a small business owner, uh, the childcare industry, every business has been really impacted. It's been awful. And um, we saw in the state of California, some 17,000 out of 30,000 childcare facilities shutting down. And we launched in July. Um, and uh, we obviously did not get the traction that we wanted, but it's a time to build, right? So this was a good opportunity for us to get into that testing phase, to start planting the seeds. And I think what people need to realize with COVID, we are going to move on. This is, if, if you feel like you're at a standstill, you're not going anywhere, it's not the case. It's a time to do something, right? It's a time to plan for when things do reopen and get back to some, whatever the new normal is, how are you going to be uh, you know, part of it? Um, what we're actually seeing right now, and uh, the, it, it went from being you know, something frightening to maybe an opportunity, is that uh, things are starting to open back up with the vaccinations uh, going out. And um, companies want to bring their employees back. We're seeing universities that want to bring their students back. And one of the important things that daycare does is that, again, it helps segment childcare. So uh, childcare, daycares operate on a state of economic scale, which babysitters and nannies cannot provide. So, uh, and daycares were never able to do this before daycare really on a grand scale. 
So essentially, the average cost of childcare in the state of California is $25 an hour, and that's based on an, a babysitter and nanny rate. Daycares are offering childcare rates as low as nine to eight dollars per hour because we can take six, seven kids around that rate at the same time. We're licensed to do so. And so one of the things we're seeing is that we're actually helping to bring down childcare costs. Now, with people wanting to bring their employees back to work part-time, with uh, students wanting to go back to work part-time, with parents needing to go on interviews to do simple things, this is the perfect solution. Uh, daycare Owl poses to be the perfect solution to get the economy, economy out of a rut and get people going back to work and get life moving again. And um, this, this really is a great opportunity for us to kind of help parents achieve their goals, help companies, you know, you know get back to work, help small businesses thrive. Uh, daycare Owl uh, was meant to help daycares not only with their full-time care, but also offer add-on services like date night care and weekend care and, um, you know, evening care, things we can't do right now. But what we hope is that once things open up, you're going to find a bustling amount of low-cost, affordable childcare at quality licensed childcare facilities. Yeah, I 100% agree with your um, advice on COVID. It is, you know, right now it is just a time um, that we need to like use to reflect and really build out what we want to do in the future with within our own selves, but also with businesses. I actually, um, I read an HBR uh, Harvard Business Review article on what businesses should do to plan ahead for, um, you know, our new normals. And it's really great to hear, you know, uh, Daycare Owl is working towards that. And, you know, your customers can be um, assured that you are ready when things do return to our new normal. Absolutely. And I should mention also that uh, if you go to the Daycare Owl website, you will find that uh, licensed childcare facilities actually have to follow, follow county guidelines for COVID-19. And we have COVID-19 amenities that parents can search by. Um, you know, so you can see if facilities are doing temperature check. You can see if they're following a certain protocol like wearing masks. And you're able to do virtual interviews with facilities as well. That is amazing. I know we're going to show your website in a little bit, but uh, mm -hmm. definitely that's amazing that we're, that you guys are able to provide that for parents because super important. Um, I do want to talk about uh, if you have any advice that you could possibly give to someone who might be looking to start an e-commerce marketplace. And if so, um, maybe why they should look at Shoop as an option. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first off, I, I want to say that um, I'm not a technical person. Anyone can do this. You just have to have the desire and the willpower to do it and how hard you want to work on it. And so anyone can create an e-commerce marketplace. If you have an idea, roll with it. If you think it's a good idea, you know, e-commerce marketplaces are probably the way of the future. It, they enable both sides, right? Uh, and so not only should you do it, but you should also think about that it's also double the work because you're catering to to clients. Not only do you need the vendors and the shops, but the vendors and the shops don't necessarily want to join if you don't have the end customer, right? So whenever you're doing something, just remember, okay, if I'm doing customer service, I need a vendor focus and I need a client focus. And if you're doing uh, marketing that I need something, you know, you're always going to have a chicken and the egg situation, right? So you're like, if you're doing marketing, well, I need to have, uh, you know, childcare marketing and I also need to have parent marketing because you don't want essentially parents to come to the platform and find no inventory, but right. childcare providers don't want to join if they, you know, they don't see that parents or they don't, think the site is popular enough. So it is, uh, you know, if you're the creative type, it, it gives you uh, an opportunity to really uh, just, just get out there and make different collateral. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging, but it's, it is the way of the future. Like the, these marketplaces are the way of the future. And I absolutely recommend Shoop um, because they know what they're doing. You know, um, yeah. I think if you want to build a marketplace, you should focus on the business plan and what you're doing, which is the important thing. Um, what's great about Shoop is that uh, even though they, they provide templates, our product is way off base from what the template is. And so they do provide flexibility with what you're trying to do. And um, it's, it, it's, they provide a great working relationship too. You know? And I can't say more than that about that. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and yes, um, 100%. Um, 
you know, one of the things that Tomi, our, our founder, is really um, fond of and very key on, uh, keen on is being able to do that custom work because nobody should be using the same template for everything. Everybody's idea is different and their creativity is different. So um, we're really great and, you know, grateful to see that um, this came to life in, in your um, Daycare Owl um, business as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue on. And we're I know we're taking a look inside uh, your site into daycare. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing the screen for a moment and switch over to that. And then we can go ahead and show off the beautiful daycare website. Okay, so uh, we were playing around before. So I'm just going to go back to as if uh, we just opened it. And I do want to let our, our audience know um, the site runs very well. My computer is a little old and is running a little slowly today. So just please bear with me on this one. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, I want to thank Tamara for uh, running the demo. So uh, I appreciate that. I'm actually on an iPhone. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so this is daycareowl.com. And uh, essentially, it is a search engine for licensed childcare across the country. Um, you can go ahead and search right away, but what we always recommend is to create a free parent account. There's no card required to sign up. Um, and Tamara has already done that, so she's gonna go ahead and sign in. Uh, if you create a parent account, it essentially allows you to see the complete information of the childcare facilities, including contact phone number, forms to download, and it'll allow you to see the, the forms. Um, so Tamara's logged in. Um, this is your parent dashboard. Uh, you see that there's uh, account information, bookings, you can review daycares, there's reports. Um, you can also add children. And if we just want to take a look over here, so you can add children, um, their age group, different uh, allergies or medications that the childcare provider might need to know. That's important information. And once you've done this, uh, and you don't have to do this step first, but it does help you in the search criteria, uh, you can go ahead and start searching. So you can search by city. Pleasanton, California is actually where we have the largest concentration of daycare. So we're going to search over there. I think this slide is just being a little slow. <laughs> okay, here we go. And so if you scroll down on the left-hand side, you'll see filters. Your age groups have already been selected for you. Um, you can filter by care type, uh, city, distance, daycare name. But right now I'm going to have to mark, click on amenities. And down here you can see um, you know, the different COVID-19 amenities that we have, provider using PPE, uh, they're providing, they're doing practicing social uh, distancing or they're doing remote learning. So you can filter by those amenities or you could just go ahead and we're gonna click on one of these daycares. So you can kind of see like an average uh, daily rate and an average hourly rate for the childcare facility. And we're gonna click on Little Buds Daycare. It's important to know, of course, is as uh, many people have figured out since it's a marketplace, that all the daycares on the platform are self-registered and they control their own information. So this is the daycares about us, their COVID-19 policy that they've listed, pictures, opening hours, the amenities that we mentioned, the age groups that they cater to, their capacity and contact information. You'll see that it's only the phone number. Uh, and that's because most home-based daycares are home-based and they don't want to share their home address and that's why they're not online. So we've kept that kind of confidential. The forms to download if you do end up enrolling in the facility. And then on the bottom, you'll see bookable spots. It is important that you contact the daycare before you book the spots because they do need the forms on file. So give them a call and set up a virtual tour. Um, but once you do have your forms on file, you can click on a spot and you can add your child. You can add as many spots or as little spots as you like. This is the flexibility for parents. If the childcare facility agrees to it, you can book as little as a few hours a week or a month to a whole week. And then once you're ready, you can go ahead and check out. The platform does provide automated receipts, uh, which is really big for childcare providers and parents. Um, Uncle Sam reimburses up to $3,000 as of right now, per my understanding, uh, it probably might change this year, but uh, they reimburse $3,000 per child 
or childcare. So if you're a parent who's, uh, you know, you want to get out there, you want to go back to school, just remember, you have $3,000 per child from the government. Uh, there is a cap uh, to spend on child care. And the receipts you get from daycare, you can take straight to your CPA. They have the EIN and license number, the amount you spent on the child care facility, and you'll get reimbursed for that. This is also true if you have an FSA plan. You can basically, if you're, you have a... Um, a dependent care plan, you can use the receipts, submit them directly to your HR for fast reimbursement. Because I know a lot of people who do wait for the uh, child care reimbursement, it sometimes takes months to do them, right? They have to wait for the provider to write them a receipt, and it just takes a while. So this is really fast reimbursement of money. That's awesome. Um, I will say your site was very easy to use. I did play with it beforehand, and it, I love the aesthetic, and, and just using it is really easy for anybody who's interested in, in signing up or, or you're playing with the site, of course. Um, I definitely would highly recommend it, and it's, um, you know, it's definitely uh, very insightful, and, you know, again, I am not a parent, but as a parent, these are definitely amazing features to have to be able to filter out and, and really, um, you know, trust your child with somebody, so I think that's amazing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just stop sharing this part of the screen here, and uh, I want to open it up. Uh, we are ready to take any questions from the audience, um, if anybody does have any questions. Um, I know that I have my own question for you. I'm just going to be a little sure. selfish and ask it first. Um, working with vendors, I know, is super important, and of course, um, having a licensed um, you know, daycare facilities are important. And I was kind of wondering what that process uh, was like for you. Have you gotten any feedback from vendors? And if so, uh, what is that feedback like? Um, so working with our vendors is very important. Uh, they're helping us drive this product. Uh, we work with facilities hands-on all the time, communicating with them, working with parents also uh, to refine the product and make it better every day. So um, it's it's critical to what we are doing. Um, again, you know, what we are doing has never been done before. Otherwise, child care rates wouldn't be where they are. And so essentially, it's when you are building a marketplace, you're not building something for yourself. That's very important to remember. You are a broker between two parties and you must appease both parties. And it's a lot of it is kind of playing mediator and being like, okay, well, parents don't want to do this. Providers don't want to do this. How do we get them all on the same page? And uh, it's, it's very critical for us to uh, talk to our vendors. Um, they've had amazing things to say about it. It is new. What we're doing is new for childcare providers too. And there's a huge learning curve. So a lot of our work has gone into training and doing events and kind of helping them on board, helping them understand because when Uber came, it was new. When Airbnb came around, it was new. There is a learning curve here, and you have to be prepared for that. If you're doing something cookie cutter, a little bit easier. But, you know, if you're doing something that's a, a little bit different, you have to be prepared um, to not only sell people, but to help them use your tool. Right. That's, yeah, I think that's super important and great feedback um, from your vendors. And thank you for answering my question just out of curiosity. <laughs> um, I do have a question here from Sasha. Uh, she wanted to know, or he, you know, um, they would like to know what was your favorite part about your launching experience? So I, I assume that means, um, you know, I guess throughout the process, what was your favorite part uh, of your, of growing your business and creating it? Um, I, I got it. I have to say it has been the overwhelming support from both from the community. Um, we registered our first hundred daycares within five days of launch and 800 within six, or sorry, 500 within six months. And it was huge. And, um, we did that because we created something that people could really get behind. And that has been the biggest, um, biggest thing about this is that, uh, this is something, this is a socioeconomic platform. Daycare Out is a real solution to a economic, political problem. Um, this is a means of helping people, uh, the underprivileged, you know, to go back to work, uh, to have a future, to get their children in early childhood education. Um, you know, when they say, oh, that child was born with a silver spoon in their mouth, what is that silver spoon? It's early childhood education and every child deserves it. So the favorite part about this is to know that I'm doing something, I'm working on something that is really helping this country in a great way, but at the same time, it's, it's not a nonprofit. This is real work. It's, we're going to create jobs on this end. And it's, I always wanted to do that. I wanted 
to make it so that there was a way to make helping people profitable. And I believe I have done that with daycare health. That's amazing. I I 100% agree. I think what you're doing is amazing. What Daycare Owl is doing as a whole is an amazing thing. Um, and with that, I, I think that's a really great way to leave our, our, web, our webinar. Um, I don't have any other questions from anyone else, but anybody who does have a question is more than um, welcome to contact us at contact at shoop.com with any questions. And we will, of course, reach out to Akriti with any of those questions to, to verify. But I want to thank everybody for joining. And I want to thank you, of course, for joining us and speaking about Daycare Owl and My uh, pleasure. Sharing, your, sharing your experience with us. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here today, tomorrow. Of course. Okay. And we wish everybody a really happy um, Thursday and a great rest of your week. Okay. All right. Uh, well, have a good day, everyone. And we'll talk Thank soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.